You see, um, my, not, my not delaying in responding to him, and he had to take three days. You know, listening to this, they're like, ah, just three days. I didn't have to spend time delaying in responding because, you see, when you stay on him, you know his voice on time. Many times, some person say, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. Two years have gone. It's actually not because they are actually waiting for a response from God. They don't actually know his voice. God. He doesn't really spend so long to talk. Ah. You see, you, we make mistakes. Many a times, my generation makes a lot of mistakes. When they have to wait on who they want to marry before they begin to hear the voice of God. It doesn't work that way. Have you heard him before you chose the course you had to study in school? Have you heard him? Did you hear him? Do you get to hear him when you have to board a keke to your friends as I say, not now, don't go? Mm. Do you hear him when you have to go for that job appointment? Because this is about directionless. And then he tells you, don't go because that's not the route. It might pay you big, but that is not where I'm taking you to. God. So you see, many times we want to get used to a voice we have not got used to. We want to get used to a voice where we want something really desperate. And so you think you're hearing a voice, but you're hearing your voice, the voice of emotions, not the God. voice of the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so you get confused because, you see, we want to hear him at the period where hearing him can be difficult. <laughs> so he, I didn't have to waste time in responding to him because looking at everything physical about him, I would never have said yes to him because, come on. I'm not trying to, I know I'm fine. Listen, I wasn't battling with my identity. Listen, when you stay in God, your identity is secured. Mm. So I wasn't having, I wasn't battling, I wasn't a, a desperate lady looking for a man. I had so many persons around me that fit the qualification physically. But you see, sometimes when God needs you to follow him, you know, when I, every time I go through the scripture, follow me, I'll make you, Matthew 4 verse 19. Yeah. I'm like, why is it that the sons of Zebedee, they were with their father, but they left their father and followed God? At once. At once. Because you see, when it comes to following, your biological relation is not necessary. Mm. If I needed to look at this physical measure with the class of people I had around me, with the class of friends, with my parents, who many times had to say, are you possessed? Mm. I said, are you possessed is a question. But you see, you can be possessed. Depends on the kind of possession. Kaya. So I understood what I was possessed with. I knew mm. I wasn't under any demonic influence. Mm. You can be possessed by the Holy Ghost. Mm. So I knew at that time he was my government, not my emotions. And so no wonder the sons of Zebedee followed. I said, how could they have dropped their occupation? How could they have dropped what they were used to? How could they have dropped their skills and followed him? Not understanding what being a fisher of men would look like. But they followed. I had dreams when I was single, just like some of you here. I saw myself in dreams where I'll be ministering. But I didn't know that it would take partnership. It would take my being directionless or choose a partner. Because sometimes the dimensions don't normally come out until there's a partnership. And so saying yes to him was quick because I understood his voice. I knew that he had to be my government to be able to be controlled by him. The Bible says, Psalm 23 verse 1, we recite it all the time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But listen, the Lord doesn't just become a shepherd when you are not a sheep. He doesn't. Until we switch from a recitation to a revelation, some scriptures will never be useful. Yes. The Lord is my shepherd. Can I tell you something? It's an is there. So it has to be a present tense for you not to lack anything. Aya. It is my. It is not 
The pulpit revelation, it is a personal one. Until it leaves the pulpit where it becomes personal to you, you it can't be useful. It doesn't make sense. I came from a funny background and the Lord had to use that scripture to deal with me. He says, until you come to a point where you become my sheep, you can't understand where I will take you to. I have said this thing many, many times. Many years ago, without having to know my husband, there was a pastor who came around to the auditorium where I was, my fellowship. And then he looked, he pointed, and I turned my back. I've said this many times. And then he said, you turning your back. And I looked at him. He said, God said, I should tell you that you'll be a global actress. As how? I hated acting. I was not even in theater art. I never studied theater. I studied biochemistry. Okay. Never did I join a drama department. I started acting in marriage. <laughs> and then God is telling me I'll become a global actress. As how? Mm. And I didn't know that in becoming his sheep, he would take me through the wilderness. Mm. He would take me through desert places. He would take me through a process so that there can be an alignment onto partnership with him. Yeah. There are times, sometimes you have struggled with some dimensions you should experience because you are having a direction. Mm. Until you get directionless, he can't be a shepherd. He can't be my shepherd. He can't be your shepherd. Until you become a sheep, my sheep will hear me. My sheep will listen. My sheep will obey. So it doesn't just end in listening. Because you can listen and not obey. So it, it takes listening and obeying to become his sheep. Where he has to speak to you and you have to follow. And then they left their occupation. They left what they were used to. They left the familiar. Because familiarity does not command the supernatural realm. So sometimes you have to look, leave what you are used to and walk with him to the new grounds he will take you to. Abraham would have said no. Because you can't see the end. He can just tell you go. But you can't understand where he's taking I didn't understand what that prophecy meant sitting in the auditorium. I did not understand what it, how it looked like. And I did not try to understand it. Mm. Because sometimes you put yourself in a place of confusion trying to understand it. Obedient people are waiters. And obedience does not analyze. People, waiters don't analyze. When he says follow, you are not trying to calculate. You are not trying to say, ah, if I follow this way, you sure? If I follow, you just move. Understanding that he is the government. Just like when there's a circular, they say everybody shut down. Like the like circular that came out yesterday, they say they brought a bulletin, don't go, don't, don't be, there's coffee, right? So what happens? Everybody obeys. You don't understand how it will look like, you don't want to know, but you just obey. The same thing when it comes to the Holy Spirit. You simply obey and believe, trust Him to take you through and see the end of it.